When you bring up the word diversity in the American workplace, eyes glaze over, people look down, they excuse themselves um, for another cup of coffee, but our guest in the studio today will explain why diversity is not a four-letter word and how it's actually crucial to doing business in the 21st century. Feel Like You Belong is thrilled to welcome Ana Ramirez Science, President and CEO of La Fuente Consulting. Ana, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So you grew up in Mexico and with your family came to the United States. Can you talk a little bit about that, that history? Sure, sure. I was born in Mexico um, and at a very young age, we emigrated from the city of Tampico, Mexico, where I was born, to Laredo, Texas, uh, to Laredo, Mexico, and then a year or two later, uh, to we emigrated um, to Laredo, Texas, and then my mother met a woman by the name of Irene in Laredo, who uh, was a migrant worker. Her and her family were a migrant worker and followed the migrant stream and came to Holland, Michigan for the blueberries and then up north for the cherries and the apples, etc. And uh, Irene told my, all, my mom all about Holland, Michigan, how it was beautiful, they had flowers everywhere, and most importantly, they had a church on every corner. So my mother came during tulip time and fell in love with Holland and uh, we came to Holland in 1968 and uh, I was about six to seven years old and uh, grew up in Holland. Mm -hmm. Uh, my mom had three children, she was single, uh, and so she was a uh, laborer uh, at the um, Heinz Pickle Factory in Holland, Michigan, and okay. she worked there for about 13, 14 years. And the factory yeah. is still there today? And the factory is still there today. Sure. Yeah, and to this day, I can not eat pickles. <laughs> <laughs> you had your fill a long I time ago. I had my fill, yeah. understand, understand. Uh -huh. What was the transition like for you, moving from Mexico and then all of a sudden going to an Anglo school? Um, it wasn't too terribly um, hard because we had gone from Mexico to Laredo and then Laredo, Texas, and so I had been in first, second, and third grade. Okay. Um, I was first and second grade in Laredo, so I had a feel for, but at that time a lot of the schools were done in English and Spanish, so we were bilingual. Um, but when we came to Holland, it was all English. So I don't recall that the transition was very difficult. Um, what was difficult is the acceptance that there weren't too many of us um, in the schools. So that was uh, that transition, that cultural transition was a little bit as, as the name of Holland, Michigan would imply heavily Dutch influence in, on the western side of the state of Michigan. And you had mentioned that there was a saying that you learned early on. Very early on, um, I heard the saying, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. Um, and um, those words uh, to today resonate really deep within me because it was those words that really lit a fire under me uh, to say, I am someone, I am valued, and my culture and language is valuable too. And I'm gonna show you that it is. So um, those really, really stuck to me um, and have, have um, I think, contributed to the tenacity that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think people who know you in the community know that you are a, a tenacious person. And, and so mm -hmm. that's, unintentionally maybe uh, Holland did create some some energy for you yeah you you went on to do uh, undergraduate and graduate degree at University of Michigan right mm -hmm. and then afterwards you went into you worked for a while in the banking industry and then in manufacturing you have your own consulting company now what was that transition going from those two industries to what you do today so how did I get here yeah um, I started out in banking uh, right out of business school I have a degree um, in uh, corporate finance from University of Michigan Business School and so uh, when I got into uh, the banking environment there were some people of color but not very many and in the bank that I started with the National Bank of Detroit uh, they were two Latinas uh, a very seasoned loan officer uh, who was head of international and then me <laughs> and so that was an experience she you know naturally became my mentor and I learned a lot from her uh, and so I was in banking for about uh, 12 years uh, and then um, 
after that, then I went into the manufacturing environment here uh, in uh, Grand Rapids. Um, but throughout my corporate career, um, I have experienced and have seen so many things as this relates to people of color in the workplace and some of the inequalities and inequities um, that uh, today we are really uh, working towards eliminating and, and making a very inclusive work environment. Um, and so um, it was not only by experience and observation, but also my employers uh, from very early on just by the mere fact that I was a person of color, put me in committees or brought me into mm -hmm. conversations. Well, okay, so we got you here. How do we get more of you? You know, um, how can you help us? What do you think about this? And so I kind of learned the diversity and inclusion work from the ground up, but I also had a lot of folks that were in positions already in corporate America also doing some of that critical work that I really engaged with. Um, and so that's how I got here. So what created that final impetus to say, I'm gonna start my own business? Um, it was my last uh, position where I was hired as a uh, marketing and training manager. Um, and um, you can't do marketing and training without a budget, right? And so it was a really uh, learning experience for me in terms of um, the types of things that are done in the workplace that either help you to be successful or not be successful. And it just also coincided with the fact that my daughter uh, was ready to go into kindergarten. And because um, due to circumstances where my mother had to leave at 6.30 in the morning to work at the factory. We were kind of on our own, you know, uh, with the uh, oversight of the neighbor, you know. Um, and so I wanted to be home for my daughter and I'd always wanted to own my own business so it was a natural transition um, to be able to do this. Timing, flex Timing. Plus flexibility. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great, yeah. great. People throw around a lot of words, inclusion, diversity, cultural intelligence. They're all related, but they're not the same. No, um, they're not the same. And I think if, if you think back of the genesis of our nation, we are a country of immigrants. We have always been diverse, always, from the beginning of time. Um, and so I think that's something that people ignore, either by choice or do not feel that we are a diverse country, but we have been from day one. And diverse really means just different. It, it just means different, okay? And that's all it is. Um, and so acknowledging, yeah, that we have been diverse for, for a very long time and accepting that diversity. When you talk about inclusion, um, it is about ensuring that you as an individual, if someone is missing and their voice is missing to say, hey, what about Alan? He's not here, but what would he think about that? Let's make sure that before we make a decision that we consider, you know, his point of view. That's being inclusive so really in the workplace. A place at the table. A place at the table. And when you talk about cultural intelligence, cultural competence, it's really building the skills that we need to treat each other respectfully, humanely, not only in the workplace, but outside in everything that we do. So if I know that you are a little bit different from, my, from me and you don't like to be hugged, I'm not gonna hug you, right? So I'm going to learn what your behaviors are like, what your preferences are like, and I'm going to synthesize those so that I when I interact with you and I communicate with you, I am demonstrating that respect for you and acknowledging that there are some preferences that will make our communication, our relationship sure. better. So when a, when a potential client comes to you, what, what do they typically say? What are their 
concerns? Um, well, I get lots of different phone calls because I do a lot of conference speaking. Um, and so I'll get calls like, oh, I heard you speak at such and such a conference. I'd like, you know, to come in so that we could talk about diversity. I'd like to, to you know, engage in a diversity initiative. Sure, you know, we can start the conversation. Or uh, we are going through some litigation. We have some issues that we need to work on. We need a plan developed to do this or we're being really proactive and we really want to start on the right foot and we want to really engage. And those are the fun ones. Those are the ones that you really get to work with organizations and people that really want to do this. It's a and very different motivation if you're absolutely. being sued. Uh oh, let's get us an expert in here to, to put out the fire as opposed to, you know, in thinking about this, how can we be proactive? That's exactly. a very different phone call. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. So, so it runs the gamut. Sure. It runs the gamut. And sure. so I just have to be in a position to listen and understand and meet them where they are and not make any judgments about what they've done, haven't done, where they are or where they need to be. But where are you today? Where do you want to be and how we can get you so what where is you the, need to be? So what is the biggest joy you take out of these engagements? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is watching the ahas. Uh, quick story, I had done a, um, probably a week-long training for a company, one of my larger companies. I had 6,000 employees, and one of the offices was here uh, in Grand Rapids. And I had done a training uh, in this company for, for about a couple of days. Um, and one of the things that I do is when I do introductions around the room, I really focus on you and I ask for you to tell me a little bit about you so that I can remember. Maybe if I don't remember your name, I associate your name with the thing that I remember about you. And I remember this particular um, time where I had just, you know, began working out and I wanted to get in shape. And so, you know, I was in my sweats and, you know, tennis shoes, hair pulled back, no makeup, you know. Um, and so I'm rushing down the, the aisles down at Myers and this woman stops me and she goes, I know you. And I go, oh my God, please no. <laughs> Hopefully you don't, you have the wrong person. She goes, you're the diversity lady that, that did our training. And I said, um, and I, I mentioned her name. She goes, yeah, you remember. Well, I remembered this because, and she goes, you know, that was a hard training for us, but that's what we really needed. And it really changed my perspective. And I just, inside of me, I just go, that's what this is about. One person at a time, reaching them and um, bringing some awareness, bringing some information for them to look at themselves and how they look at the world and then how they want to impact the world. A wise person once said that an aha means letting go of an old belief. Yes, absolutely. And so absolutely. Your, your job is really helping people set aside old beliefs and take on some new understandings. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap up in a moment, but there's one last question I want to ask you. Recently, there's been a rather strident national conversation about the topic of immigration. Did you have some thoughts about that? I think what is going on um, with the topic of immigration, and particularly with the Paris attacks that we have just seen, is that um, we need to first acknowledge that we, the U.S., are a nation of immigrants. I am a prime example of that, that this nation welcomed me and my family, and we have become part of the fabric of this nation. I think with some individuals uh, in the political spectrum uh, talk about immigration, they have the underlying notion of an undocumented, of illegal immigration. And we're not perfect as a nation, but we are a nation of values, a nation that values people and the contributions that many of us, current, past, and future, will make to our country. So I think we need to be careful about how we talk about immigration and what immigrants have contributed to this country and, and will continue to do so. And the fact that immigrants, by their phenotyping, are risk takers and hard workers. Exactly. And so the, the things that, that I will leave you with relative to us being immigrants 
is the things that my mother taught us, and that is a insatiable work ethic. You work hard. Um, a uh, unwavering faith in your God to get you through, and also humility and service that we have been given an opportunity, and we need to help others to achieve their dreams and their hopes and aspirations. That's awesome. We're going to have to leave it there, but I want to thank you so much for coming by and, and sharing your story and, and your wisdom with us. Right. It's been, thank you, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you. You bet. Brazil, they're all surprised about this because in Brazil, I did not cook, I didn't do much, and, um, and I have no culinary background training. But when I moved here, you know, I had something in my